And my friends, I am going to give you the plan of what President Trump needs to do to defeat the globalists. Stay tuned to this episode of The John Hunter Weston Show. And let's begin as we always do, with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So with the Supreme Court ruling that Trump cannot be taken off state ballots, President Donald Trump is the front runner for the 2024 GOP nomination. His record on life, faith, family, and freedom, well, is a mixed bag. But even for that, what he has achieved for our values has been remarkable. However, he has said clearly that he wants to take down the deep state, that he wants to fight the globalists. Watch this. Watch this incredible statement he made to the United Nations already way back in 2017. Check this out. If you want freedom, take pride in your country. If you want democracy, hold on to your sovereignty. And if you want peace, love your nation. Wise leaders always put the good of their own people and their own country first. The future does not belong to globalists. The future belongs to patriots. The future belongs to sovereign and independent nations. Today I have a message for those open border activists who cloak themselves in the rhetoric of social justice. Your policies are not just. Your policies are cruel and evil. And America's goal is not to go with these endless wars, wars that never end. One of the most serious challenges our countries face is the specter of socialism. It's the wrecker of nations and destroyer of societies. Socialism and communism are about one thing only, power for the ruling class. Today I repeat a message for the world that I have delivered at home. America will never be a socialist country. There is no circumstance under which the United States will allow international entries to trample on the rights of our citizens, including the right to self-defense. That is why this year I announced that we will never ratify the UN Arms Trade Treaty, which would threaten the liberties of law-abiding American citizens. The United States will always uphold our constitutional right to keep and bear arms. Americans will also never tire of defending innocent life. We are aware that many United Nations projects have attempted to assert a global right to taxpayer-funded abortion on demand right up until the moment of delivery. Global bureaucrats have absolutely no business attacking the sovereignty of nations that wish to protect innocent life. Like many nations here today, we in America believe that every child, born and unborn, is a sacred gift from God. And he repeated that direct declaration of war against the globalists to their faces right at the World Economic Forum in 2020. Watch. We're committed to conserving the majesty of God's creation and the natural beauty of our world. But to embrace the possibilities of tomorrow, we must reject the perennial prophets of doom and their predictions of the apocalypse. These alarmists always demand the same thing, absolute power to dominate, transform, and control every aspect of our lives. We will never let radical socialists destroy our economy, wreck our country. Okay. So, taking on the globalists that control banking, big tech oligarchs, the corporations that put, they really pull the strings of governments around the world, means Trump is wanting to take on a fight that is far beyond him with all of his prowess. It's even beyond America. Even at America's height, it's beyond America. It's beyond any national power. Since the globalist plan, as we see it rolling out today, is a plan hatched with the inspiration of the demonic. There's no longer a political solution to the mess we're in today. 
And that's why what is needed is divine intervention. And if Trump wants to engage in that fully, he needs to convert. Yep, he needs the saving power of Jesus Christ and the sacraments. He needs to embrace the Catholic faith. And that's why I'm begging you to pray with me for President Trump to do just that, to convert to Jesus Christ. But, okay, I know many of you are going to run away at this point and say that's crazy, but wait, wait, before you say that it's crazy and it'll never happen, let's review some of the hints that suggest such a conversion is indeed possible. And you know, we know biblically, of course, that Salvation is open to all people regardless of the wretched state they're in or were in. So remember Trump kneeling with his wife Melania in front of the altar at the National Shrine of Pope John Paul II in Washington? Look at that photo. Beautiful. Remember when in February 2017 the First Lady Melania Trump prayed the Lord's Prayer at a Trump rally and the President complimented her for it? It was incredible. Watch. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed by thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Trump's official announcement accepting the Republican Party's nomination to run for re-election in 2020 was immediately followed by the first ever rendition of Ave Maria, the Hail Mary, sung in Latin, in Latin honoring the Blessed Virgin Mary, right from the White House. Watch. And remember the president's first Christmas address? He spoke, and I quote, of the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in, a, in an address that was watched by millions and millions around the world. And in it, he was unashamed of America's great Christian heritage. Watch this. Welcome everyone, Merry Christmas, special time of the year. For Christians all across our nation, around the world. This is a sacred season that begins 2,000 years ago when Jesus Christ was born. An angel declared to the shepherds tending their flocks, Behold, I bring you good tidings, great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. There in Bethlehem, Mary and Joseph held in their hands the Son of God, the light of the world, and through him the promise of eternal salvation. 
No matter one's faith or beliefs, the Christmas season reflects all that is best in the American spirit. This is a time of the year for rejoicing with our family and friends, for spreading charity and goodwill in our commitment all over this country, in all of our communities, and for giving thanks for all of the blessings in our lives. And in May of 2018, Mike Pence revealed that President Trump regularly asks to open his White House meetings in prayer. And we know that under Biden, the illegal immigration crisis is crazy. But under Trump, already by July 13th of 2017, get this, more Christian refugees were admitted to the United States in the first six months of 2017 than Muslim refugees, which was, of course, the exact opposite of what Obama had done before that. Remember also that Trump got rid of the contraceptive mandate, which harmed faith-based organizations such as Little Sisters of the Poor. But one of my all-time favorite memories was when he declared churches essential services because anti-religion mayors and governors were allowing liquor stores and abortion mills to open during COVID, but not churches. Get a load of this. The governors need to do the right thing and allow these very important essential places of faith to open right now for this weekend. If they don't do it, I will override the governors. In America, we need more prayer, not less. Thank you very much. But Trump's legacy is not all roses, not by any means. And this is another reason why we need to pray for his conversion. Remember, he was bamboozled by Fauci and gave us the abortion-tainted jabs himself, which he still considers a good thing, despite the harms it caused. He also had an abysmal record on homosexuality, even though he was pretty good on the trans insanity. But we got to remember how terrible he was on the homosexual issue. Watch this. President Trump is the most pro-gay president in American history. I can prove it. My name is Rick Grinnell. I'm America's first openly gay cabinet member. As a United States Senator, Joe Biden said gay people couldn't receive security clearances because we would be a security risk. Joe must have been terrified when Donald Trump appointed me as acting director of national intelligence. The fact that I'm gay didn't even phase Donald Trump. Joe Biden certainly didn't congratulate the appointment or even acknowledge it but his silence was deafening. President Trump has done more to advance the rights of gays and lesbians in three years than Joe Biden did in 40 plus years in Washington. For four decades, Joe Biden has attacked the LGBT community. As a US Senator, Biden supported Don't Ask, Don't Tell and the Defense of Marriage Act. Biden voted to cut off federal funds to any school that teaches acceptance of homosexuality. Biden said again and again that he was against marriage equality. Senator, do you support for... gay marriage? No. Marriage is between a man and a woman. And now, well, now that we've made progress, Joe Biden has changed his mind. I know firsthand that President Trump is the strongest ally that gay Americans have ever had in the White House. Donald Trump is the first president in American history to be pro-gay marriage from his first day in office. President Trump knew I was gay when he appointed me to one of the most prestigious and powerful ambassadorships in the world. As ambassador to Germany, President Trump fully supported our fight to crush the homophobic and barbaric Islamic terrorist organization Hezbollah and the Iranian regime that supports them. While President Trump was denying the homophobic regime money, the Obama-Biden team was giving them billions of dollars. Joe Biden not only admits it, he says he'll do it again if elected president. I would, I would reinstate the Iran nuclear deal. President Trump began a historic campaign to decriminalize homosexuality around the globe at the United Nations, where he publicly challenged the 69 countries who make being gay a crime to change their laws. And my administration is working with other nations to stop criminalizing of homosexuality. Gays and lesbians can be put to death in nine countries just for being who we are. So why did Joe Biden fail to make this issue a priority 
in his more than 40 years in Washington, has never answered this question. This is why I believe we need President Trump in office for another four years, and I'm certainly not the only one. There are millions of patriotic gay Americans who are sick of being told to sit down and shut up by those who want to control us, those who are afraid of our voice, those who want to keep equality a partisan issue. They tell us our opinions don't matter because we don't subscribe to their groupthink. They try and bully us into silence. But in my experience, proud gay people don't like to be silent. They like to be loud. Yesterday's champions of diversity are today's intolerance. Well, I love this country and I'm not gonna be silent. There are tens of thousands of gay conservatives just like me who also won't be silent. Gay people don't have to vote Democrat because Donald Trump is the most pro-gay president in American history. Oh yeah, it was that bad. But remember on the trans issue, he's strong. Just watch. The left-wing gender insanity being pushed on our children is an act of child abuse. Very simple. Here's my plan to stop the chemical, physical, and emotional mutilation of our youth. On day one, I will revoke Joe Biden's cruel policies on so-called gender-affirming care. Ridiculous. A process that includes giving kids puberty blockers, mutating their physical appearance, and ultimately performing surgery on minor children. Can you believe this? I will sign a new executive order instructing every federal agency to cease all programs that promote the concept of sex and gender transition at any age. I will then ask Congress to permanently stop federal taxpayer dollars from being used to promote or pay for these procedures and pass a law prohibiting child sexual mutilation in all 50 states. It'll go very quickly. I will declare that any hospital or health care provider that participates in the chemical or physical mutilation of minor youth will no longer meet federal health and safety standards for Medicaid and Medicare and will be terminated from the program immediately. Furthermore, I will support the creation of a private right of action for victims to sue doctors who have unforgivably performed these procedures on minor children. The Department of Justice will investigate Big Pharma and the big hospital networks to determine whether they have deliberately covered up horrific long-term side effects of sex transitions in order to get rich at the expense of vulnerable patients, in this case, very vulnerable. We will also investigate whether Big Pharma or others have illegally marketed hormones and puberty blockers, which are in no way licensed or approved for this use. My Department of Education will inform states and school districts that if any teacher or school official suggests to a child that they could be trapped in the wrong body, they will be faced with severe consequences, including potential civil rights violations for sex discrimination and the elimination of federal funding. As part of our new credentialing body for teachers, we will promote positive education about the nuclear family, the roles of mothers and fathers, and celebrating rather than erasing the things that make men and women different and unique. I will ask Congress to pass a bill establishing that the only genders recognized by the United States government are male and female, and they are assigned at birth. The bill will also make clear that Title IX prohibits men from participating in women's sports, and we will protect the rights of parents from being forced to allow their minor child to assume a gender which is new and an identity without the parent's consent. The identity will not be new, and it will not be without parental consent. No serious country should be telling its children that they were born with the wrong gender, a concept that was never heard of in all of human history. Nobody's ever heard of this, what's happening today. It was all when the radical left invented it just a few years ago. Under my leadership, this madness will end. Thank you very much. But even Melania, his wife, a Catholic, is confused on the issue of homosexuality. But with Pope Francis the way he is, it's hard to blame her. However, you should know where things actually stand. 
and therefore see the need to pray for this amazing conversion to happen. Watch. America is a place where you can be anything you want. Your opportunities are endless because our country provides so many chances to succeed. As First Lady of the United States, I know how much my husband loves the American people, and I know his passion in life is to see all the citizens of this great country do well and prosper. Donald is the businessman who never worked in politics, the ultimate outsider, and that earned him many enemies in the political establishment. I was shocked to discover that some of these powerful people have tried to paint my husband as anti-gay or against equality. Nothing could be further from the truth. Donald loves helping people, and he loves seeing those around him and his country succeed. As the leader of the Republican Party and President of the United States, Donald has been clear that gays and lesbians will be treated as he has always treated them, equally. Donald is the first president to enter the White House supporting gay marriage. Donald is also the first president to appoint an openly gay official to his cabinet. The story of America is one of trailblazers and fearless underdogs. Today, we see free thinkers and independent voices like gay conservatives and lock cabin Republicans silenced, censored, and bullied by cancel culture mobs. This is not the America any of us want to live in. America was founded on God-given rights of freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and freedom of expression. We are a nation that celebrates and protects diversity, and we condemn those who bully and intimidate people. We do not want to live in a place without freedom, where everyone is forced to think alike. My husband sees the promise of our country and all her citizens moving onward as we recover from many challenges. Even if you don't agree with my husband about everything, you have the right to say it. That is the American way. Let's protect it. I'm First Lady Melania Trump. I support the log cabin Republicans, and I am unapologetically outspoken. God bless you all, and God bless our beautiful nation. And I know these are sobering things, but we need to see them to understand where we're really at in America today. As president, Trump appointed three conservative Supreme Court justices who were instrumental in overturning Roe v. Wade. He also regularly enacted pro-life policies, including cutting off Title X funds from Planned Parenthood and other abortion vendors. He also reinstated and expanded the Mexico City policy forbidding tra taxpayer funds from going to overseas uh, to fund abortions. However, since the fall of Roe v. Wade, he's actually distanced himself from the pro-life movement and criticized states passing laws that restrict the killing of preborn babies. Remember, he criticized Governor Ron DeSantis um, for signing a law that makes most abortions illegal when a baby's heartbeat can be detected, calling it a terrible mistake. Watch him say it for yourself. People, people are starting to think of 15 weeks. That seems to be a number that people are talking about right now. Would you sign that? Uh, uh, I, would, I would sit down with both sides and I'd negotiate something and we'll end up with peace on that issue for the first time in 52 years. Uh, I'm not going to say I would or I wouldn't. I mean, DeSantis w is willing to sign a five-week and six-week ban. Would you support that? You think I, that I goes think what he far? did is a terrible thing and a terrible mistake. So years ago, I learned of a prophecy by a holy Catholic man named Tom Zimmer, who lived out his latter years in a church in Italy, which houses the home where Mary, the mother of Jesus, grew up. And she experienced the Annunciation. The angel Gabriel came to her and told her she would conceive. And she did, in fact, conceive there, Jesus Christ, by the Holy Spirit. 
So Tom Zimmer spent all of his later years in the church. It's known as the Church of Loretto. He heard many, many masses every day. He prayed at all hours of the day and night. And in 1983, while Trump was still a playboy, he prophesied, Tom Zimmer prophesied uh, to a friend of mine, Charles Curran, Dr. Charles Curran, that Trump would bring America back to God. Dr. Curran told me on when he was uh, interviewed on one of my shows that he said, there's a man, um, and these are the words of Tom Zimmer to, uh, to Dr. Curran about, Char- uh, about Donald Trump. He said, I quote, this is, remember, this is 1983. There's a man who has the hand of God on him. He has the IQ of a genius he, and a first-class education. And everything he approaches, he attacks with blinding efficiency. His name is Donald Trump. Dr. Curran actually informed Tom at the time, wait a minute, wait a minute. The guy you're speaking about is known to be a high-flying, jet-setting millionaire who's dated many models. But Tom Zimmer, the holy man, insisted, no, Claude, he said. I'm telling you, the hand of God is on him, and God is going to use him in the future, end quote. So you might say there's still great hope for Donald Trump and Melania Trump. But a conversion is needed. The graces of Christ and his holy sacraments are the only things that can defeat the evils Trump has declared he wants to take on. Will you join me in that prayer? Will you join me now? Sign up for our prayer pledge for the conversion of Donald J. Trump. I know that former nuncio to the United States, Archbishop Carla Maria Vigano, prays for President Trump. Remember the words of Archbishop Vigano. At LifeSite, we were privileged to be asked by Archbishop Vigano to publish his open letter to President Trump. And the president indeed retweeted the letter himself. And the president spoke of his thanks and admiration for Archbishop Vigano. It was tremendous. And here's what Archbishop Vigano wrote. He said, and I quote for you, for the first time the United States has in you a president who courageously defends the right to life, who is not ashamed to denounce the persecution of Christians throughout the world, who speaks of Jesus Christ and the right of citizens to freedom of worship, your participation in the March for Life, and more recently, your proclamation of the month of April as National Child Abuse Prevention Month are actions that confirm which side you wish to fight on. And I dare to believe that both of us are on the same side in this battle, albeit with different weapons. Mr. President, my prayer is constantly turned to the beloved American nation, where I had the privilege and honor of being sent by Pope Benedict XVI as Apostolic Nuncio. In this dramatic and decisive hour for all humanity, I am praying for you and also for all those who are at your side in the government of the United States. I trust that the American people are united with me and you in prayer to the Almighty God. End quote. That was Archbishop Vigano. So will you join with me and pledge to pray for the conversion of President Donald Trump? Sign the prayer pledge now. And here is a perfect conclusion to our hope for President Trump. Watch this awesome clip of the speech in Poland, that President Trump gave. And may God bless you, may God bless America, and may God bless President Trump. And when the day came on June 2nd, 1979, and one million Poles gathered around Victory Square for their very first mass with their Polish Pope, that day, every communist in Warsaw must have known that their oppressive system would soon come crashing down. They must have known it at the exact moment during Pope John Paul II's sermon, when a million Polish men, women, and children suddenly raised their voices in a single prayer. A million Polish people did not ask for wealth. They did not ask for privilege. Instead, one million Poles sang three simple words, we want God.
In those words, the Polish people recalled the promise of a better future. They found new courage to face down their oppressors. And they found the words to declare that Poland would be Poland once again. As I stand here today, before this incredible crowd, this faithful nation, we can still hear those voices that echo through history. Their message is as true today as ever. The people of Poland, the people of America, and the people of Europe still cry out, we want God.